Hey, Renee. Hi, Annette. Today, we're going to talk about trusting God because people sometimes will say, you know, because of my sexual abuse, I just don't trust God. It's sure. really hard for me to trust him. And so that's the subject we're going to talk about today of how we can get that trust back if we feel like it's not there. Yes. I didn't even realize growing up that I lacked trust in God. I thought I was very, well, growing up, I thought I was religious. <laughs> and then when I became a Christian, you know, following Jesus, realizing he was a real deal, you know, and would walk alongside me, um, I didn't realize I still had distrust. Like I believed he was the God that would save me. I believed, you know, he'd walk alongside me, but there was certain things I wasn't believing. I didn't realize until years later. <laughs> sort of why I brought this up today, because I thought, well, if I struggled with that, kind of half believing some things, that there's probably other folks that struggle with it too that have been abused. Well, I think it's a growing process, just the same as trusting a person. So when you first sure. marry Eddie, of course, I'm sure you were just blindly in love and so enamorated <laughs> with him and everything. I was. Um, but as the marriage went on, you learned to not trust him so much in some things and other things you trusted him on, yeah. right? Yeah. You still yeah. loved Eddie a lot, but there were some areas you had never gone through an experience of having a child ever, the first child that you ever had, it was your first child. There was a lot of unknowns, but there were certain things you could trust him for because you had seen it and you'd proved it just with living with you constantly. Right. So the biggest thing is when you woke up every day, married to Eddie, and you wondered about his love for you, he was there. He would do little things. And you chose Eddie. You chose to this day. How many years have you been married? This year will be 32. You chose for 32 years. Eddie, you didn't divorce him. No. You didn't walk away. You chose. Now, I'm not saying you didn't feel like it. And there were times that you weren't angry or frustrated or that you didn't have hard times. What I'm saying is you still choose Eddie today. Well, that's what you need to do with God every single day until you don't choose anymore. That you go ahead and you start your day and you choose God. And it's a mindset that you have to have. And one of the ways that I choose God every day for myself is to immediately maybe stick on some praise music while I get in the shower. And or... I start with my devotions in the morning. So I'm getting into the word and I'm hearing his voice. I'm reading about him. Yes. And I'm choosing him. And by choosing him, then I'm starting to trust him. That makes and, sense. Yeah. And when I'm reading the word, my mind is being saturated with the goodness of God with God's nature, I'm finding out more and more and more about him. And so I'm seeing how he treats people and my trust is growing with him as well as yours did with Eddie. Right. The more you were with him, the more you knew about him, you knew you could even probably tell me to this day, uh, no, Eddie wouldn't like doing that because you know, Eddie, right? No, and I can go ahead and tell you, no, God doesn't like us taking things without paying for it. He calls it being a thief. How do I know that? Because I know God and his word says that, that we're not to steal. Right. And in that I can trust because I've seen it several times in there. The other is choosing to follow him. So I'm choosing not to steal, even though my desire may be very great to take something. I'm choosing to follow him and his ways and not do that. And that builds my trust with him. Because he stays beside you as you refrain. <laughs> yes. Yes. But some people ask, you're choosing God, you're getting in the word, you're saturating your mind, that type of thing. But I, how can I trust somebody I can't hear? I can't hear his voice. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. I'll get the comment of, well, I can't see him. I haven't experienced him. 
So yeah, how do you trust him? Now the wind, of course, that's a perfect example, but people say no, because you can't, the wind is not a person, but you can't see the wind, but we certainly know when it's windy outside. And we certainly know when we need to put on more hairspray, to keep our hair down, or whatever it is because of the wind outside, right? You can't see it, but we could see what it's doing to everything else, that type of thing. We know God exists. He's proven it in his word, but that's not what this is about at this time. If you want to listen to God, ask him a question, talk with him, and then be quiet, because that's what the word says. Be still and know that I am God. We had that scripture this past week um, as one of our posts that we did. Powerful. Um, listen to him in songs. I have heard God speaking to me in a song, and boy, music and song could be so powerful to our soul in the scriptures listen to him in the scriptures is he talking to your heart what's he saying to you is he making you laugh is he making you cry what's going on in that um look for god and hearing him through others when you talk to me sometimes i go hey nat i'm really concerned about this or whatever it is and, and you're bringing it to me I really feel like God put on my heart today. And then you'll tell me what God put on your heart. I'll go, wow, Renee wouldn't have even have known I was going through this today, but it was God. And he's just going through Renee to tell me that he loves me, cares for me today. And he wants me to know that. And isn't that what a true lover does? He communicates. He communicates, he communicates that way. Him. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, through artwork or pictures or even going outside and seeing nature. He communicates through that. Absolutely. So to me, that's a good way to hear God, to experience him, so you could start that trusting him. Go outside. And that says when she goes fishing, she is out there on the boat, and man, she just feels like she's just right with God. And Renee says she goes out there with nature and goes camping, which I can't even imagine, Renee, because that's not me. And some people going, well, I can't imagine fishing, but that's okay. But we go out in nature and it's one of our ways of getting a God feel for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Filling up our bucket. It might not be for you, but if you do take the time, you can go out there and go, all right, how are they experiencing God in nature? And he might show you in a whole different way or manner, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. I have a friend that he experiences God most when he's with his family. When he just spends time with his family, that's when he feels the more filling of God. He sees it being expressed between the kids, the wife, himself. He, he feels that, um, that immediate expression of love. And then it reminds him of God's expression as well of what it's supposed to be and what it is to him. And that builds that's the trust factor, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Because... Trust has to do with faith and Hebrews talks about faith in Hebrews 11. And that's mm -hmm. always that great faith chapter in there. The more you get to know God and have that relationship with him, the more you got to know Eddie, the more that you could say, oh, Eddie's going to be there on time. Eddie's a guy that likes to be there just a little before something starts. He likes to be on time. That's the thing with Eddie, but you know that. So if Eddie is 15 minutes late, you're wondering, where's Eddie? Yeah, very odd. <laughs> it would be what's very wrong? odd. It would actually be concerning. Okay, God, what's going on with Eddie type thing? And you might want to check on him. So yeah. just like that, you know God, and he's going to have certain traits and certain things and the way he is, and you find that out through his word and by reading it. And if you don't understand, find somebody to help you to study the scriptures. Absolutely. But it is a challenge for when you've, when you have been abused, you get your, I'll call it your, your glasses, <laughs> your glasses of perspective of the world and your perspective of others, and especially your perspective of God. When that abuse has happened, it's like you're looking through broken glasses and you're seeing God in a distorted way because you're assuming he's going to be like the abuser or you're assuming he's not going to be faithful. You're assuming that he's one that will disappoint. You're assuming he's, you know, all the negative things that we tend to believe about God. 
because that's kind of what we've lived with, you know, and not until you get into the word of God and into the time with God, do you learn the opposite? And it's, it's like a retraining of your brain of truth. Same with your train, <laughs> the fact, you know, first the facts, then the faith, then the feelings that a lot of times it's hard to switch from that feelings to what are the facts. Yes. And I, had, and I had to start doing that, you know, when I started realizing, oh, God does care. Oh, you know, because I thought I was just, you know, lower on the totem pole than everybody else because these things happened in my life. And I thought certain situations like abuse, he just doesn't pay attention to because it was too big. Therefore, how can I trust God with these big things, these other big things in my life when he couldn't be trusted in that area was my thinking. Does that make sense? Yes. You know? So not until getting into the word and receiving truth and what i mean by that is you you know when you get into the word and you start reading you know you'll you'll learn about the different names of god you know when one of them was provider and there was a time when i wasn't trusting god to be my provider and when i read just that that one little part about now i can't remember what it's called but he has a specific name called provider and when i had learned that and like held on to it and really dwelled in it it just it totally changed my perspective of the things that god could do and the things that god already had done and the things he was still going to do and it helped me realize oh he did do that oh he did do that <laughs> so it changed it just didn't me. come in the same package that you thought it would no not at all i just thought it would kind of come from a night and day you know you wake up and ah! You know, relationships great, Jesus is great, and everything's great. <laughs> no. It's almost like going to school and relearning something. You're learning a whole new language. It's like all the time. Now. All yeah. the time. Yeah. So it is a practicing of trusting. But it it's is a practice of trusting. It's also a practice of choosing to replace those negative thoughts that you have towards God and then reading the word and changing them out as yeah. well as the negative thoughts that we have about ourselves and what does the word of God say? Yeah. The words that we should have for ourselves. It's huge. Huge. So that step is really important. And the only way to get the truth as you spoke was to get into the scriptures and read them. Absolutely. Yes. Not and until then did I realize, you know, it, one of the descriptions was uh, that like lightning comes out of his hand, you know, and that he's so powerful. He could squish a mountain. I know it doesn't use the word squish in the Bible, but those are my terms, you know, <laughs> but it, it, it drew the picture of how big my God is and how powerful our God is and what his abilities really are and how trustworthy he can be. It says his love is unfailing. His love is everlasting. That contradicts the distrust. It's, it's opposite talk. So I had to choose. Okay, so what's really truth? What I'm thinking? Or what it says in the word about him and what he's already proven. Similar to what you're saying about Eddie. You know, <laughs> he has certain character traits that he's proven. This is how he does things and how faithful he is and how on time he is, how early he is. It's his character. Yes. I can trust that. <laughs> All right. Let me go ahead and read something to address when you had talked about how can I trust God? I've been sexually abused. My life feels like I am just hurting so much and I don't know how to move forward. And how can I trust God to let this happen? So after a life's worth of living to the point where I'm at now, when I wrote the book, um, uh, Playing Dead, okay. Choosing Life, the last paragraph reads as, let me just read it. Who would have thought I would come to the point in my life where I can make such a statement? Thank you, God, for all the past, for all those who played a part in it, and for your incredible wisdom to answer prayers that will not only bless me, 
but the world where everything you have created lives. Certainly mm. not me. Today, my prayer is to live, experience, learn, love, forgive, and wield the sword that God had given me to set the captives free, to bring healing to the brokenhearted, and wake those who are playing dead. Mm. In the end, I discovered was this story was not about my family, not about me. It was about God and his story being lived out in front of me. His story is the one that needs to be shared. Mm. I would not have a heart for those who are brokenhearted. I wouldn't have compassion for those who are sexually abused as much as I have today. If he had not brought hope and healing into my life, do you mm -hmm. have to be sexually abused to help those who are hurt and wounded? No. no. But I know for me, it worked out well so that God could be glorified in this horrific instance that happened. And in that, I could trust God that he could take this broken, crushed person who didn't feel like living another day and breathe into her life. And that's what he did. Little by little, as I got into his word, which is pure and true, I could see him, his character, his love for me. Mm -hmm. And I could see how he saw me through his eyes, not the way I could see with my broken glasses, as you mentioned, but how he saw me as a precious daughter of value. Yes. <laughs> and that's how you could start trusting God. Even when you don't feel like it, start walking the path and start reading his love letter to you. Mm, the Amen. Bible. 